Welcome to GoVM Lab, India's first job-ready VMware learning platform where professionals meet experts to revolutionize their VMware careers. So now, so far, uh, we have discussed about one of the troubleshooting command, which is ESX CLI. And I would say that 80% VMware vSphere's administrator, not the L1, L2, but maybe uh, L3 and more above than that profile, they usually deal with this ESX CLI interface. But other than ESX CLI, there are a lot of other tools are also available provided by VMware, which, which using those tools, you can do the troubleshooting at the host level other than ESX CLI. So whatever, what I was saying that other than ESX CLI, I'm actually going to give you a couple of other commands, which uh, you guys can explore it based on your interest and passion towards this technology. Okay. And, and you can get your hands dirty with this advanced CLIs as well. So now ESX CLI, I think we have already discussed about it. 90% of the time I would recommend you do with this ESX CLI. Okay. Because ESX CLI is designed in such a simplified way that you can easily understand these commands and, and get started with these commands uh, for the troubleshooting purpose. And if you look at that, the command interface is very clearly ESX CLI network IP interface list. What does that mean? I want to list out all the IP interfaces, what is, whatever is present on my ESXi host. Similarly, the next command is ESX CLI storage core device list. List out all the storage devices, which is actually claimed by my ESXi host. That's the ESX CLI interface. Now the next interface or the next CLI interface, which is a much more advanced interface. And uh, uh, if you do see that this interface gives you a lot more information about ESXi kernel. And that interface is called VSI SH interactive shell. Okay. It's like a proc interface. So if you're familiar with the Linux interface, there's a proc file system with that proc file system. What we do, we actually go and change the uh, parameter at the runtime in the kernel. And then we try to see the behavior of that parameter that how these parameters are, are, are behaving in the kernel. Like if you want to make some changes to the kernel at the runtime, right? You can actually make use of this VSI SH command, but this command is obviously not exposed to, you know, till L3 level of engineers also actually, because it's, it's a little bit more advanced command, but how did then this command is very complex also, right? It's not something you can easily understand it. Okay. But just to, for the sake of our discussion, I thought of putting and making you guys aware about this command as well. So how this command it's, uh, works that uh, what we are doing this particular command. So it says that slash net slash port sets. So if you look at this particular command, it has a very specific notion and that notion itself is a little bit complicated in itself. So the first notion, what do we have? It is net net stands for network. Similarly, if you look at this command storage stands for storage. Now the notion is get get means I want to get fetch the information set means I want to write the information, right? It's like a pretty obvious thing. Get means fetching the information set means configuring the information. So I am trying to read the information about uh, specific to networking, then port sets. Now, what is this port sets? Port set is a set of ports, like port group. What is that port group? Port group is a collection of ports, right? That's what we have it. Port group is the collection of ports. So that's what it's all about it. So we have a port sets and in that port sets, we have a virtual switch zero because I might have a vSwitch zero, vSwitch one. So I really want to get the information about a specific port of that virtual switch. So I'm just giving the notion of that virtual switch. Then I'm giving notion of ports and then I'm giving the specific port ID, the port ID, what I'm interested into. And then it gives me a bunch of options about that port ID. As I said, that's too advanced. But if you want to get the information about the status of that particular port, you can run this command. Okay. Now, if you try to understand what these section means, I don't think it would be, it would be pretty easy for you to understand that what are these notions and, and what information I'm trying to fetch it here actually, because it requires to be very honest with you, a lot of deeper understanding at the kernel level and, and how this IO call happens and how your packet travels all the way. But, but sometimes you want to get the information about network status or stats, right? Uh, maybe you can just explore this command. Okay. But it's very complicated. Similarly, if you look at the storage side also, what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to get the information about my VMHB SCSI adapters, right? So this is my SCSI fire is because from where this is the adapter in the adapter. I'm very much interested into my VMHV zero adapter and what I want to get the information about the stats, like how many IO reads are happening, how many IO writes are happening. And that's where you talk about, look at that. It says that how many successful commands have been done, failed commands, right? Right operations. How many right operations have been done? How many failed operation? How many right operations have failed, right? So it gives you a lot of, a lot of information, which actually, uh, uh requires i mean sometimes you know you want to go much more deeper actually 
from a technology perspective right and that's where you actually go and get try to make use of this command but this command is is has a lot many detailed information but not easy to digest actually okay the the next command said what do we have it is the vim cmd so this is a vim cmd interface now this vim cmd interface is actually gives you uh information about your virtual machine information about your host right and and most most of the time we actually use this vim cmd command to get information about my vms configuration from the cli okay so for example if you look at this particular command this command says that vim cmd vm svc so this is the notion right vm svc so i am very much interested into vm specific operations in the same notion if you look at this this command says that host svc which means i am very i am very much interested into host specific information in vm svc i am very much interested into vm specific information so find out what information you are interested into because this is a host level command so you can only have a two object either host or the virtual machines which are running on that host right so you could have either host svc or vm svc and then if i use the vm svc i want to get the information about get all vms give me information about all the vms which are running on that host and in my in my lot of lectures you might have figured it out that i keep using this command because this command is actually with the one command i can figure it out that what all the vms which are running on my esxi host what all the data store these vms are running into what all the operating system these vms are running and what is the respective hardware version now if i try to fetch this information from my ui i might have to do seven eight clicks in that ui to fetch this information and then i need to consolidate that information but this one command gives me all the information about my virtual machine what all the vms are running what what all the data store those vms are running what is the path of their vmx file what is the os they are running and what is the vmx version that vms are having it right so this is what uh, this command gets really simplified right similarly the below command if you if you see that it will you list out all the host specific task like for example in the task pane whenever you create a vm it tells you in the task pane that vm is getting powered on virtual machine powered off virtual machine and all those stuff right so if i want to list out all the task about which has been performed on that specific host right i can actually run this command and this command will give me the details about all the host specific task now the next command what do you have it is the vmkfs tools command now this vmkfs tool command is very specific to your virtual machine file system now this command is again a very complicated command okay and this command will gives you information which are very specific to your virtual machine and the files which are being managed by your virtual machine file system which is our vmfs file system so this vmkfs tools is again a tricky command has a lot of parameters and lot of uh, things you can do it with this command but do it with the cautious because with these commands you are actually directly interacting with your kernel and trying to fetch the information at the run time right you can actually not only fetch the information you can also make the changes in the at the kernel level parameters right so do it with the cautious but how this command works i am just trying to tell you the example now this is a example which says that okay let's take this the fourth third one now this command says that let's say i want to get the information about my vmfs data store you know i want to get the information that what is the capacity of my data store what is the space is available what is the block size of my uh, vmfs data store what all the learns this vmfs data store is extended extended to right there is a concept of volume extent or vmfs extent right we can add more than one rdm as a extent to my to my data store to expand the capacity of my data store right i want to get all this information at a one place if you do it from the ui you might have to do seven eight clicks to get get this information and consolidate it but this one command vmkfs tools hyphen ph ph is basically gives you a, a, a lot of partitioning related stuff about your data store and give the name of your data store vmfs volume data store so that is the label of my data store once i execute this command this command tells me that look at the capacity the capacity of my vmfs volume is 39.86 gb the available space is 22.2 gb the block size it means the block size if you remember right if you have gone through that vmfs program or module where we discuss about the block size when i am formatting any file system what is the block size of that file system right and that's where it gives you information about block size it also gives you information about maximum file size you can create a single file with the size of 64 tb with this current 
a data store, whatever you have created, right? So this gives you that information. Then it also gives you information about partitioning spanning. Some of the people, some of the folks have reached out to me and asked me that question that how would I know that my VMFS data store is running on only one VMFS extent or it is actually being extended to multiple uh, learns actually, right? So, so you can get this information right there. If my VMFS data store is spanning across multiple extents, it means multiple learns are actually contributing to that data store to extend the capacity of the data store. I can get the information right there. Is native snapshot capability native snapshot capability means can I take this data store uh, uh, as a snapshot. I mean, can I take this data store snapshot using my SAN uh, snapshot capability does have this guy. Does this guy have that kind of capability. You can get the information right there. It says that native snapshot capability is no, which means that you cannot take the snapshot of this particular data store from your SAN capabilities because it's a local data store, right? If you look at this particular extent, if you look at this particular extent, right? Uh, this particular extent, if you do see that, it actually have a MPX VMHBA1. What is that MPX VMHBA1? It denotes to my local drive. If I have a iSCSI learn, I might be having a identifier, VML identifier, right? Virtual learn identifier. So as of now, it's it's my VMHB one, which is my local disk, and that is the reason we actually do see this this kind of stuff, right? If you have interest in learning VMware more in depth, not from an administration perspective, but from the architect or consulting perspective, then join our VMware vSphere Zero to Hero Data Center Expert Program. This particular program has been highly rated by all of our learners. 100 plus careers have been transitioned successfully with our Zero to Hero Data Center Expert Deep Dive Program with the 100% placement record. Now, what are the key highlights of this program? As you could see that it's India's first job-ready VMware learning program, which has a 70 hours of intense learning with the 80 plus hands on labs 40 plus scenarios would be presented to a learner as a challenge questions to assess their learning. We do have a mentors having a 15 years of experience and the certified professionals. You would be getting opportunity to have a one on one in person doubt clarification session with the VMware mentor and this particular zero to hero program will also preparing learners for L3 or senior level profiles. Now we have transitioned many careers with our deep dive program and you can see some of the feedbacks right here on your screen. These are the feedbacks what we have received from all of our successful learners who has transitioned their career with us. So what are you waiting for? If you want to become VMware expert or want to master this technology, then call us now today on the given number or maybe drop us email on the provided email address. Thank you.